Hickok 45 here, and my rifle is having a birthday. And for his birthday, he wants to put a big chunk of lead on the 230 yard gong. So I'm gonna let him try it. There, are you happy? Let's go on down to the shooting table and see if that made him happy or if he needs to put some more rounds down range. <laughs> Is that a beautiful rifle? You have seen it. And this year makes the 30th year that I have had it since I bought it in 1986, okay? Uh, Bought it in a Clarksville and a small shop had a fellow order it for me. I had read something about it, an article and a magazine, I guess. Maybe it was Shotgun News at the time or whatever that, that Winchester Browning had uh, done a remake, a centennial, basically, a hundred year celebration of this, the Winchester 1886. And uh, so Browning was doing the remake of it and all that. And they are actually limited numbers. I forget what the... 5,000 or whatever it is of these just like this and uh, and I couldn't find one anywhere of course and it's one of the few firearms I bought sight unseen I had had it ordered and I said look I've read enough about it I love rifles like this the caliber the cartridge the barrel this everything and so ordered it sight unseen 30 years ago so this is its birthday before 19 or 2016 ends, we wanted to have a cel little celebration. He wanted to have a little celebration. And it's also the 130th year, of course, of the Winchester 1886. So it's kind of a big year for it. So let's also blow out the candle here. You think a 4570 will do that? All right, blew out the candle. And just to make sure it's out. <laughs> that would have been the easy way, wouldn't it? But that would have been too easy. So, oh man, we have more ammo. Let's get the two liter over here. Put one right in the middle of that thing. Yeah, all right. <laughs> And let's see if it'll take out a real two liter. Boy, will it. We have another round. We'll just take out another two liter. Looks like one fell off over there. Oh man, they just, oh, we got another round. They disintegrate. Well, let's do a little bowling. <laughs> oh man, to knock a bowling pin like that, take some, uh, Foot pounds of energy. Let's hit the swinging bowling pin. <laughs> oh man, just out knocked the thing off there. Uh, those are some hot rounds or some hefty rounds. That's some of this uh, federal, uh, let's see, what's it called? Uh, vital, vital shock. Yeah, vital shock. And uh, those are some serious rounds, great hunting rounds. As would these be, the uh, 300 grain soft point. I'll shoot a few of those. And we appreciate the help from Federal. Uh, Federal. Now this gun is not being made exactly like this anymore. So now you can find these, you know, uh, around on auctions and things occasionally where somebody's letting one go. But, uh, and Winchester is making these things uh, in Japan. Uh, but they're, uh, they're a little bit different. They're about the same. I don't know if they got the tank safety on them, all of them or not but uh, they're licensed to Maru Maroku, who has made this one. The, uh, yeah, it doesn't say, it just says made in Japan. And, uh, but uh, the thing is Maroku, I believe, it makes these and they do a great job. So they're licensed from Browning and uh, Winchester to make a lot of these kinds of things. But I this exact model, I think part of the agreement was that in this exact configuration that uh, that Winchester couldn't make any or whatever the agreement was exactly like this with the octagonal barrel and this the exact configuration I think it's kind of hard to find which is my favorite configuration all right full-length mag tube full-length octagonal barrel and everything so 
They, this is a wonderful rifle. Of course, the original Winchesters, you can still find them, but they generally run uh, any kind of shape at all. They start out at $10,000 and, and on all up, on up. Uh, these are made very, very well, smooth as glass. John Browning had his act together when he, uh, he designed this thing because again, uh, as I've discussed before, this was the really the first lever gun like this that would handle the big 4570 cartridge. It had the strength to handle it. Uh, the 1876 Winchester would handle some big cartridges, but it was still that toggle link system, just like the first Winchester, which was the Henry, which is really a Winchester. Just didn't have Winchester's name on it, but the, the Henry and then the 1866, 1873, and the 1876, those were that toggle link system, which is really not all that strong, okay? So they beefed it up, made it bigger for the 1876, but this is the lever gun where John Browning uh, took it he, he just redesigned the lever gun and uh you know with the the locking blocks that come up here they're just like the 92 you know that that was that was new and very strong so it would withstand the pressures and handle the very popular cartridge of the day the 4570 still very popular okay and uh i guess john Branning figured this out because he'd had so many years and decades of experience uh designing firearms on the way man he didn't either you know how old he was when he designed this he was like 21 he may have started it before he was 21 but he was like 21 and uh makes you feel like a slacker doesn't it you know I mean, john brown he designed this rifle that kind of revolutionized the uh the lever gun world when he's 21 years old and his first gun when he was 19 i think on that single shot uh browning that was so so popular that Winchester, you know, bought the rights to and everything, as they did with this. So, anyway, what were you doing when you were 21? What was I doing? Eh, running around being goofy most of the time, not designing uh, classic uh, rifles. Good thing he didn't have Facebook and a tablet and an iPod and the internet and all that stuff. Uh, he'd have probably been so busy with that, keeping up with his friends on social media, he just wouldn't have had time to design this rifle. So we're thankful for that, right? Let's, let's load it up. Why am I yakking? All right. Cool rifle. It's based on, uh, of course, the Winchester 1886. And this one's made by Browning. I thought it was appropriate because John Browning designed it. So, not bad, not bad. I remember reading about it back in 1986, and I just moved out here, and I thought, oh man, that is a gorgeous rifle, and uh, one of my favorite designs. I would love to, to get a hold of one of those. And again, that was before the internet, so I, I just started asking around, and, uh, and I asked a gun shop owner if he could locate one for me really and I, he went to shotgun news maybe or uh, distributors or whatever that he dealt with you couldn't just go to the internet in 86 you know and he found it and told me what it would cost and i think at that time it was seven something 700 and some and uh i said well I'll order it yeah i've got to have it got to have it and i'm glad i did gorgeous rifle so been mine for 30 years and it's in good shape i don't think i have a lot of scratches on it i have used it i have fired it most of you have seen it and it's great for bowling <laughs> takes a pin right off it oh man uh let's try the red plate Sweet. Try that other red plate in the middle. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Uh, I guess I won't hit the gong. It's not hard steel. But you know those buffaloes are. I'll take a buffalo out up there. Or a uh, ram, rather. All right. Ram killer. Went under, I think. Well, I don't know what I hit there. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, it's me hitting him low. Oh man. Smells good. Gunpowder in the morning. This is, uh, for those who don't know, this is the most, it's the most buttery action, the smoothest action, and is considered probably the premier lever gun of all time, one of the premier rifles of all time, and I know I've slobbered on it and bragged on it before in videos. It really, uh, we did several videos early with this rifle, and you've not seen it in high def that often, I guess, or in really with a good camera the or best camera so uh, i'm pleased to bring it out again uh that's one other advantage of having the thing out here so you can get a, even a, a better look at it but just a beautiful design just like the 92 which john Brang designed which is a kind of a reduced version of this with uh, the two locking bolts that you know travel up through those mortises and lock it in and uh just a sweet gun even the uh, loading gate on this one, if you notice, I'll shoot a couple hand loads. Even the loading gate is not a problem like some lever guns. It's a big old soft loading gate and you don't pinch yourself like you do on some loading gates. Some are really bad about that. And, uh, and uh, they just load smoothly. This is the 405 grain cast bullet that is uh, classic. It's been used for Oh, about a, over a hundred years, well over a hundred years, of course. About a hundred, what, 40 or 50 years, you're getting, the time gets away. So, oh, and this is, uh, this butt cuff here, uh, it's not big enough, really. It's close. Somebody sent me that, and I forgot the name, uh, RH. If you're watching the video, go ahead and post who you are. I forgot. Uh, if, uh, I think, I, I don't recall uh, whether he, was confident it would even fit or not. It was kind of a trial and error things I recall. I wish more people would make this kind of butt cuff for lever guns, exactly like this. Uh, it's like this big mystery. You, you can't get leather makers to make it. There are a few who do it. And a lot of them I've seen are like, they're too busy. They're too you know, full of designs. I just like a simple one like this, maybe a little bit lighter in color. Just a simple one like that with nothing on it. Just the loops for the ammo. Uh, boy, if I ever found one that I really like that, that would fit great, uh, I'd have one on every lever gun. It's just so hard to find them. So, but anyway, uh, let's take some shots with this thing. It's not light, but boy, it feels good. Let's pop this bowling pin here. I will bet this will knock him off. Yeah, I love bowling. Two liter. There's another two liter over there. 405 rings of lead on him. Now these, I can probably shoot the gong okay. I don't think it'll damage it much. I start to say, especially if I miss him. I think it's a lead splatter on that thing. <laughs> you definitely tell when you hit it. <laughs> They have a big flat nose on them, so uh, they don't necessarily hang up much, but you, sometimes you got to jiggle it in there. Oh, boy. Can I shoot it a couple more times before you go? I know you're in a hurry, but uh, I'm just going to celebrate the anniversary a little more here. I appreciate Federal furnishing this ammo. Big old cartridges. The barrel's getting warm. That's all right. It's your birthday. In fact, this whole year is your birthday. I'm going to take over another ram. Or try. All right. <laughs> oh, man. I think those pigs are hard enough to shoot. Oh, no, we need to shoot a buffalo. And boy, that rattles his cage. Shoot the other buffalo. <laughs> and a pig knocks it down boy I think there's one round left I'm going to pop that bowling pin again right there probably knock it off just about <laughs> oh boy and that's quite a, a rifle it'll hold nine 
in the magazine. So you've got nine 45 70s, nine plus one, which is 10, right? Uh, in, a, in a lever gun. So it was very popular. It was chambered in uh, different cartridges, uh, 50 caliber, 45, 45, 90, lots of different uh, chamberings. It was a popular rifle. It, it really was. It, uh, they wanted something that would, because Winchester didn't really have uh, a good hunting lever gun at the time, you know, to compete with the single shots back then, they would handle any cartridge. And, uh, and this was the answer. The 1876, to the extent was an answer. This was the ultimate answer right here, the 1886. And uh, every time you know, I shoulder this thing, and work that action, just like the Model 92, I'm reminded of what a, a sweet piece of machinery it is. It just feels good. It, it, the lock up, I mean the sound of the thing, it's uh, music to the ears. Big old semi-heavy gun, but you want some weight when you're shooting a 4570. You really do. Beautiful rifle. Uh, I'm just glad to help it celebrate its 30 year anniversary. And not only its 30 year, that's really kind of my 30 year uh, relationship with it. Ooh, romantic. But uh, it's that 130 years that's uh, pretty interesting too. 130 years this thing's been around and still being made by several companies. You know, a lot of the Italian companies are making them. Winchester, Browning still, I think both are making Well, not those companies sort of don't really exist anymore, but they're licensed through, through Japanese makers. And, and they're nice rifles. Now, again, as I've said before, you can't drive to the Browning or the Winchester plant, okay, factory, and watch them make guns. Those don't really exist anymore that I know of. Uh, so they're, they're licensed, the names are, to companies that will make these things and do a great job. So still, even though there really is no Browning or Winchester factory, the names, the, the firearms that have their names on them are some of the best built though, okay? It's my take on it anyway. So anyway, 1886, it was a good year. It's a very good year for John Browning. Life is good. <laughs> oh, well, since I'm still here, let me take this moment to thank uh, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, for their support of the channel. Uh, we appreciate you know, their help. Uh, SDI is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing. You can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field. might be appealing to you. They work a lot with veterans and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. So check out the link, uh, sdi.edu. Uh, the link is in uh, the description of most videos, almost all videos for the last six months or more. So, uh, so check that out. Also, while I have you, since I'm still here, uh, be sure to, to check the links in all the descriptions because you know we're on Full 30 now also with all the videos. So there's a link in the, in the descriptions to Full 30, as well as, of course, our sponsors, uh, SDI, BudsGunShop.com, uh, Federal Premium. So all the good information is there, as well as uh, keep in mind that on Hickok 45 and Sun, we have uh, quite a few videos over there. John's doing the, the Gun Culture Radio Show over there. Check it out if you haven't done that yet. Our Facebook page, uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook, the uh, Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page. That's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information. Even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just, just whatever. Uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a, it's a pretty good system for that, even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out. And you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. All right.